Hello, I'm Paula Farkasson at the Princess Grace Irish Library, and I'm delighted to have with me here Gráinne Hurley. Thank you very much for joining us, Gráinne. I'm very happy that you have accepted and have been awarded the Ireland Fund of Monaco uh, literary um, the bursary for the spring season. So we're going to welcome you in March. You'll be arriving at the end of February and you'll be spending a month with us to uh, research your novel. And you're going to tell us a little bit about that. And I just wanted to thank the uh, Ireland Funds uh, in general the philanthropic worldwide organization uh, that some people may not know about, but they have generously sponsored uh, the bursary, the writer and academic in residence uh, twice a year to spend a month uh, writing or researching a project here at the Princess Grace Irish Library in Monaco. So there's been a, a lull of a year due to uh, many things, as we all know. And um, it's so good to have the program back on track. And we're delighted that Gronje is uh, the been awarded. And we'd love to hear a little bit of a teaser, Gronje, about what you're going to work at when you're here. And also um, just a little bit of uh, your profile and, and uh, context, because I, just to start, kick the ball rolling, uh, you obtained your bachelor's in English and Greek and Roman civilization from UCD. Then you got your master's in modern drama, also in ECD, and then you went on to do your PhD in contemporary Irish literature. Uh, and you are going to tell us now uh, the subject matter of that. Yes, of course. And can I firstly say thank you um, so much. I'm so delighted and honoured to be the recipient of the Ireland Funds of Monaco bursary. And thanks also to you, Paula, and to the Princess Grace Irish Library for hosting me. Um, so when I'm in Monaco, I'll be spending my time writing my book on Mary Lavin's relationship with the New Yorker magazine, as revealed through their extensive correspondence housed in various libraries, including University College Dublin Library and the New York Public Library. It was actually J.D. Salinger who initiated Lavin's contact with the New Yorker at a time when she most needed a creative boost. So she had just returned to writing at, following the death of her husband, and she was busy raising three young daughters, caring for her uh, widowed mother, as well as managing a farm. So she was she was only returning to, to her writing. So this uh, contact by the New Yorker really gave her a um, little spark in Lavin, and it marked a very important um, chapter in her life and career. So getting published in the New Yorker, uh, was then, as it is still today, a major accomplishment and her association and success with the magazine raised her profile internationally signif significantly and uh, especially in the United States. Exactly. So she had it ties a, in nicely with the, our theme <laughs> this year, the Irish American influence. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, was, uh, I, I'm just curious, was it a coincidence that she got in touch with The New Yorker and, and her background uh, for those who don't know it, was she was born in Massachusetts in the United States and then at the age of 10 moved to Ireland when her parents, her Irish born parents wanted to return there. Is That's that correct. Mm -hmm. So um, it was actually, she'd been corresponding with J.D. Salinger about American markets and it was, it was Salinger who recommended that she contact the New Yorker and unbeknownst to her, he actually wrote directly to the New Yorker recommending her as an author. And so that's, that initiated their relationship. So it was good timing in a way as well. Absolutely. And and she's a prolific writer and uh, very flamboyant and and, uh, and very um, avant-garde, really. Uh, finally. Oh, very much ahead of her time. And uh, yes, absolutely. And considering that she was the sole breadwinner for the family, she had a lot of responsibility. And depending on writing, you know, that it, having a the first reading agreement gave her a constant income yearly, you know, but she still had to sell, sell her stories in order to make money, so. Yeah, which is uh, unlike yeah, some of the sure. uh, well-known writers, uh, uh, having the time um, to do it and the financing to do the writing as well. Absolutely, yes. Just for our listeners here, because when I was looking at some of the things that you've done and I, I saw um, uh, you, you've, been, you've been doing a lot of research on her and you've also um, been quoted in many uh, um, articles uh, about Lavin. 
And I just, when I was reading all of that, I just saw that the former president, Mrs. Uh, Robinson, when she heard of Lamb's death, said she was deeply saddened to learn of, and uh, she had made such a remarkable contribution to Irish literature. Mary was held in great esteem by people both in Ireland and abroad, and her sad departure will be a profound loss to, to Irish writing. And uh, really, it, it was, uh, it, it, it says it all for the a former president of Ireland to to mention her death. Absolutely. Like, yeah. And, and it's important to note that even before she started writing for The New Yorker, she had uh, work published in the United States, um, but just that it raised her profile um, significantly. But yes, she's one of our most important writers. And that's why it's it's fascinating, the, the research that I'm doing, because in the letters, you're seeing the genesis of some of her stories, how her own life influenced her writing and also the inner workings and procedures of the one of the most influential magazines in, in the world. So you have this, you know, this, this relationship that is revealed through, through their correspondence, particularly with her um, chief New Yorker editor, uh, Rachel McKenzie. So you see the, the, the working relationship, the collaborative relationship that they had that brought the, the stories from manuscript to print. So it's fast, it really is fascinating. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And this is going to be the basis of your talk that you're you're very kindly going to give us when you, you're over here. So we look that's forward right. to early March. We'll we'll send out uh, the dates to everybody and we'll look forward to hearing more about that. It sounds wonderful. Great. I'm looking forward to it too. So much gone. Yeah, we won't give too much away now. We'll we'll <laughs> let everyone come to your talk and, and safe trip from Dublin. To Thank you so much, Paul. Looking forward to at it. At the end of the month. Okay, take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.